Hi guys, you are talking to Rira. I come to talk to you about what I have either read in the blogs, watched on TV, or heard in these streets. Today it is about what we have watched on TV. We are talking about 90 Day Fiance The Other Way, Season 4, Episode 3. Let's get this out the way. This is going to be a, a short video. I shouldn't take too long today because there really wasn't much going on this episode. I just want to say that 90 Day Fiance has fallen away from the or, initial reason for the show to now is just like some of these couples it is very clear you guys are trying to get on tv and with that said i want to start it off with debbie and osama you cannot convince me that this is a real cu couple especially not on debbie's behalf i'm sorry this is extremely fake this is giving me um angela and michael where angela was clearly chasing reality tv and uh, michael is really trying to come to the u.s um, and this is what this is giving me here as well. I don't believe this couple. Um, I haven't even met the guy yet. And just based off of her communication, even her son's communication, I am just not buying it. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on. Now let's get to Gabby and Isabel. Nothing much going on there. Um, Gabby has been dropped off to the airport. Um... It, I mean, Gabe, forgive me. Gabe has been dropped out to the airport. Um, Isabel is speaking with her friends, preparing for his arrival. She's ner nervous about him meeting the parents and telling them that he's actually a trans man. Um, she says that, you know, the sex is practically the same as when she was with the man. She says she do have a lot of questions concerning um, certain um, things that relieve from the body and so forth. Um, yeah, so outside of that, they're just, they're preparing for one another. We move on. Okay, Jen and Rishi. Rishi does not want to be with Jen. I think that he probably thought he was going to use Jen um, to come to the U.S. And then when he realized how clingy she was, and um, I think when she snapped off on him, when he went, when he disappeared, he realized like, uh, I'm not, I don't know if I want to do this. But again, once again, another couple that is using for the show. Do I think that Jen is interested in Reesh? Absolutely. Do I think that Reesh is just trying to get his face out there, especially with him being a model? Absolutely. He has no intentions of really marrying this girl. So he is sitting down with his family and they all reside in one household, which is quite no normal in Indian households, um, you know, as we've seen in the past. And... His father is deceased, so he is the male figure for the household. His mother has just prepared food for everyone. She's just like, listen, we've already married off your sister. We are waiting for you to um, find a wife because I'm tired. I'm tired. All this domestic work that I'm doing in this house, I'm getting old and I'm tired. Well, here's the thing, Mama Rish. Um... Reached and found him a girl that's also up there in age as well. So I don't know if she's going to be much of assistance anyway as well. So there's that. But yeah, he hasn't told his family yet. And um, I just don't think, that he, like, he really doesn't want to marry this girl. He does not. Like, her moving out there is very much, um, I'm getting secondhand embarrassment every time when she's on the screen. But let's see what happens. We move on. Okay, Chris and Jamie. So they finally meet. And, um, you know, she arrives in Columbia and is she in Columbia? I think she's in Columbia. Yeah, she's in Columbia. So she arrives out there and, you know, they like one another, you know, um, Jamie is short for her, but Jamie is super attractive. So she's fine. Jamie goes and finds her, uh, um, an apartment that they will be residing in. The apartment is super nice. They both change into lingerie. And, um, you know, they, they like one another. Well, here's the thing. You know, Jamie goes, I mean, Chris goes on to remind Jamie, hey, I have narcolepsy. And I also have um, these nightmares that, that, you know, wake me up in the middle of the night. So I may, you know, especially me being in a new environment, just give you a heads up. I may jump up from my sleep and I may end up hitting you in the middle of your sleep. <sighs> Jamie, run. Go and find you another American chick, girl. Run. And, and and I hate to be harsh like that, but let me tell you something. It, it's one thing after the next. It's like she has all of these warnings that she has to give um, Jamie. And I would be overwhelmed if I was her. And you're not going to go and 
I don't care what kind of dreams you have having. You hit me in the sleep. We having a whole fist fight. Okay. You're not doing any of that nonsense. I will never forget. Let me tell you guys this story real briefly. I had a coworker years ago. And um, I well, it was two coworkers, and both of them started dating, right? It was an older woman, and there was a younger man. And um, the guy who worked with us, he was like the sweetest guy in the world, at least so I assumed. Well, they were dating. They ended up um, practically moving in together, or they were always over one another's home. Well, long story short, she comes to work with bruises all over her face. I'm talking about looked like he put a whipping on her. And we were just like, what WTF happened? You know, like, like what the F? And she tells us that apparently he had some sort of nightmare. It was the first time it ever happened. But he had some sort of nightmare, some type of triggering. I don't know of what. But he woke up in the middle of the night and proceeded to whip her tail. Right? Clearly mistaking her for whatever demon or whatever that he was battling in his sleep. And just proceeded to whip her tail. So, of course, she put him in jail. And that was all she wrote. But here's my thing. Situations like that, it scares me when you have someone saying to you, hey, I may end up hitting you in the middle of the night. You know, like, don't be alarmed. No, I'm going to definitely be alarmed. And you're not going to hit me. You need to figure out a way to work through all of that. Or you're going to sleep in another room or the couch or whatever. Like, I just don't know. Call me ignorant. But we're not going to do any of that. Not while I'm in this bed. So, I don't know. Like, if I was Jamie, I'd be like, you know what? Let me go ahead and find me another American chick. Let me call that sis that I met that was um, based in Texas. Because this is just too much. Okay, we move on. We now go over to Nicole and my mood. Okay, here's the thing. Night of parties are a victim in this, right? Like, I have no sympathy for night of one. Usually in these situations, we're like, well, why are you guys dating? Why is the American dating someone of a Muslim background? Um knowing that, that they're going to have these stipulations in their countries, right? Okay, that's usually the case, but this is a little bit different. The difference is is that, Mamu, you when you proposed to Nicole upon that trip, right? When you met her, she was not Muslim. When you met her, you saw this very pale white woman with chopped hair or whatever, okay? Um, you did not see any coverings of any sort. All right. Now you marry her and you're like, you know what? You need to be covered up this day and the third, right? Okay, granted, we're in your country. Absolutely, cover yourself up if I was a girl, right? Of course, right? But then she goes back home where she's in her country and you're still directing what she wears, even in her home, even through FaceTime. Help me understand what's the point of that. Now, we can say, well, she married a Muslim man, so what does she expect? And he married an American girl. What did he expect? Now, I can understand the stipulations in your country because you know Egypt is very Muslim based country. However, in hers, what in the world? You greet at the airport. I'm looking at the outfit. The girl had a turtleneck and a blazer on. I'm like, what what are we missing? The turtleneck, I don't know, was it see-through? I didn't I didn't see anything. But he's just like, yeah, you're too revealing. Like what do you want from this girl? Do you want just the eyes to be showing? And if that's the case, you should have married you someone from your country. But you are looking at the benefits and you're trying to bring yourself down to America. Like, like you guys have nothing in common. When you guys speak, it is very clear that you have nothing in common. What do you guys even talk about? Like, I'm, I'm just, I see no chemistry there whatsoever. So I have no sympathy for either of them. Let's now go to the meat and the potatoes. Danielle and Johan. Okay. Danielle has to be one of the most negative people that has come across our screen. We first meet her in the season when she's telling Kim that his American dreams basically throw it out the window. That was the first episode. Throw it out the window. I'm staying in this country. Like you manipulate him into this relationship. Let's be real. Because even though I do think that he is using her for papers, you knew that as well. And you're just like, okay, instead of you being like, okay, I see that he wants to come to the U.S. before he even signed anything, before he even got married. Listen, I don't have plans on coming to the U.S. I don't have plans on living there. I want to live over here in the DR with you. I didn't see if he wants to marry you. But that's not what you did. Instead, you married him knowing that you had no intentions of bringing him to the U.S. You didn't even file his papers. This is manipulation at its finest. You tell him his American dreams are pure baloney. 
let it go, let it die. That was episode one. Episode two, you tell him that he doesn't know how to run his own business. Keep in mind, you want to live in the DR. The way that the meat is, is shown as um, in Johan's business is the way that it happens in a lot of countries. If you don't like it, just like you said, don't eat the meat. But you're the one that wants to live out there. And you go and you tell him that he doesn't know how to run his business. Where's the money coming from? You're trying to do all this Excel th spreadsheet things and you are in a whole other country. Let him, let him be a man. Let him be a man. But speaking of being a man, this is where Johan, I'm side-eyeing you as well. So Johan, they go and they look for an apartment. Oh, wait, one more. One more thing before we look for the apartment. The third negative thing that she did was she said to him, hey, um, in six months, if this doesn't produce any type of profit, I need you to close this down. Girl, what? Girl, what? Just very, very negative. I can't with Danielle. And I'm like, this is why you're single and why you had to run down to another country to go and grab this man. This is why. But let's continue. They go looking for an apartment. Of course, she's like, we're not going to live in the rural environment that your family lives in. I want to still feel like I'm on vacations or well, not so quite. She wants to live in a more of the tourist part. Right. Um, and she finds a home that is an apartment that is very um, similar to what she could find in maybe Miami, so to speak. Right. OK. Two bedroom. They showed the place. It's pretty nice. It's at two thousand dollars. And someone is going to say, oh, two thousand dollars. She could have found that in the U.S. Um, not at these prices. I'm in Texas and. Um, you know, for what she's getting and the views and everything that she's on, that's pretty good. Especially considering she was in uh, New York. But even if she was in Florida, that two bedroom and so forth, she probably would have been paying a little bit more than that for the location that she was at. Like if she wanted to live somewhere near Ocean Drive or something like that um, in Miami, then yeah, she'll be paying a grip as well there too. But regardless, 2000 is pretty reasonable, I think. But anyways, she says to him, what are you going to contribute, right? He tells her, I can only contribute the equivalent of 90 US dollars. That's all I can contribute, right? Okay, fair enough. Now, mind you, this is where we have the issues. Johan, you, just like she said, you have been basically looking at her like a sugar mama, right? Where you are, you can't say that I don't have this type of money and you know I can't afford these things, but yet you are having her spend on things that you would not have been able to afford if she wasn't there, right? It is the equivalence of a girl who wants the man to buy her Chanel and all of these things that she herself couldn't afford before she met that man. But now that he's in town, you're grabbing all of this stuff. So Johan, who had spent $200 on peanuts, not even in the U.S. am I grabbing $200 of peanuts. Danielle, I'm going to have to see that, that receipt. Cause was it peanuts or was it peanuts, both of your meals and your drink and your dessert? Like I, like I got questions, but if it was strictly $200 on peanuts, then Johan, what in the world you spend? She says you spend 5,000 on breakfast. Okay. Johan, what in the world? Okay. Whatever. Still, if he says that that's all he can contribute, that's all he can contribute. You went and you grabbed you a guy from a rural part of the DR and you now want to, to him to pay for your tourist living, okay? No, but here is where, Johan, you messed up with me at, was when you said, well, you couldn't assist with any housework. You said that the woman works and does the housework and the man works, and you went and you minimized her work just because she works remotely. That's insane. My dear, if you can't contribute to the finances, at the very least, and even in the U.S., many men who can't contribute to the finance, they'll still be, you know, like, rather it be the yard work, rather it be, um, you know, the cleaning, the, the maintenance of the kids, whatever. Like, you know, roles aren't just in black and white anymore. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people have um, reduced the use of roles, right? Um, not in every household. You know, some still are traditional. But they have reduced the, the use of roles, which 
Johan, you you clearly have reduced the roles because traditionally, if she is supposed to be taking care of the housework, then you as a man is supposed to be caring for all of the bills, but you're not doing that. And she's the one that's taking care of the household. So then therefore, you don't mind reducing the roles along that, that line. But now when it comes to housework, that makes no sense whatsoever. And that's when you lost me. And that's when I was like, okay, Johan is just a good looking bum. He's a good looking bum. Right? Like it makes no sense. And he probably is making money from the meat, but he is so used to Danielle paying for everything. He going to tell her he ain't seeing too much money. You can't convince me that you're not making money from that place. You can't convince me. You know, so that is where he lost me at. Um, but yeah, so that's my review for this episode. Wasn't too much going on. Would love to know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me more. Like, do you think that Johan can, is able to contribute more? Or do you think that Danielle should just suck it up like she grabbed her man from the DR? And the same thing with my mood and Nicole. Do you think that, you know, her guy should relax a little bit? Um, I think that she needs to bring herself back to the U.S., I think that it is super risky to be out there, especially in a country where, you know, the women are just not as valued, you know, and you're dealing with, I mean, I don't know. Like there's something about my mood that just makes me nervous. I don't know. Um, and I'm not saying that based off of, oh, because he's Muslim, just based off of the fact that he has no woman experience based from what his brother said. Um, he's very stern and very controlling with his ways. Um, to the point, and I'm not saying that based in the country, but you're trying to control even what she wears in a whole nother country. Um, and nothing that she has worn has been revealing, like at all. Like, if anything, she's a very boring dresser to me, but I digress. Okay, so anyways, tell me what you guys think. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you.